Um, thanks to everyone for being here today. Um, I'm not seeing other faces aside from my co-presenter, Linda Wen. My name is Laura Abate, and we're delighted to have you here. Um, we're going to talk about e-resources basics today, and I'll leave the first half of the session and then turn things over to Linda for the second half of the session. Um, I do have a chat screen activated. Um, so please ask questions there. I don't um, I don't know if you have the I have the ability to ask audio questions. If you do, we welcome them. Um, any um, it's two after two, and I love to get started on time, so I'm going to go ahead. Um, so again, my name is Laura Abate. I'm from the Himmel Farber Health Sciences Library at GW, and I'm teaching today with Linda Wen, who's from. American University's Washington College of Law. Um, what we're going to talk to you about today are e-resources basics. Um, I'm going to lead the first half of this, which is really about understanding the relationship between the institution zone, the network zone, and the community zone, um, or the IZ, NZ, and CZ, as we call them. Um, and then we're also going to look at sort of the definitions of portfolio and electronic collection um, some different types of electronic collections and sort of the relation, you know, how they work together and, and some options for how you can make decisions about how you want to run things at your institution. Um, we'll also talk about the more about the CZ and specific searching the community zone to find items you want to activate. Um, I'm then going to turn things over to Linda. Linda, do you want to pop on and talk briefly describe what you're going to talk about in the second half of the session? Uh, sure. Um, I will just follow the agenda. Uh, I probably will talk about uh, your resources activation deletion first before I do the CDI, just because CDI is ridiculous. <laughs> the CDI, um, it tends to be something a little bit slippery for some of us, um, for me anyway. Um, so we still, you know, we will do our best to explain it and explain how it works to provide resources to your patrons. Um, so I'm gonna dive into the zones. And again, just to review, the institution zone, this is the materials that are in your library's collection that you've activated for your patrons use. Um, the network zone is really the resources that are managed by the WRLC, the WRLC, um, licenses and purchases collections for us um, and manages them. And so you'll be able to see them and see that they're managed, but you won't be able to make changes to them. Um, and again, and I'll, I'll talk about this, the, and the collections in the NZ are generally available to all libraries in the consortium, although some libraries may choose to opt out of certain collections at, at their own prerogative. And then the CZ, the community zone, this is the whole wide world of Alma. So this is things activated or added to the Alma community worldwide. Um, there's a lot of great stuff in there um, and a lot of high quality records, especially records activated by vendors and collections maintained by vendors, but it, it is like the whole wide world. So you're going to find stuff that's great in there that you want to activate and some other things in there that have some maybe skimpier catalog records or some, some data that you don't think is all that terrific, but you might be able to get useful information from. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to do this mostly with screenshots, although I can go to live Alma if there are questions or things we need to demonstrate more thoroughly. Um, and I have this mostly um, with examples. So this is a screenshot of Alma, and you can see the tabs here across the top. I'm in the institution zone. I've done a search for CINAHL complete. We're a health sciences library, so the CINAHL database is important to us. And I just want to sort of walk you through what you can see here. Um, for one, because it's in the institution zone, you can see that this collection is activated for my library. So my um, patrons are going to be able to find the items in this collection. Um, up here, and I'm- Right, right, right now, we're, we're still seeing the PowerPoint. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm having we a go. Lot of trouble. Thank you very much, Michael, for letting me know about that. Um, so just to rewind, and apologies for that, 
Here we're seeing the ALMA screenshot. And so you can see here the tabs for the institution zone, the network zone, and the community zone. I've done a search for CINAHL complete. And so I'll be able to see holdings in each of those zones should they exist. In this case, this record exists in um, my institution zone because I've activated it for my users. You can see across the top here, actually, can you see my mouse? That it says that the type yes. of it is an aggregator package. So this is a, you know, um, a package put together by this vendor, um, in this case, EBSCO host. So it come, you know, it's an aggregated package. When I license CINAHL, I license the whole thing, or CINAHL complete, I license the whole package. And I've opted to activate all of the um, all of the portfolios or items in that package. And I'll come back to that point. Um, I can also see here that there are 1,364 titles activated in the package or available in the package, and I've activated them. Um, so these are the individual items in the package. I can see here that the link, linking level is the article level. So if I do um, link, say, from another resource, Google Scholar or PubMed back into full text from this collection, my users are going to land on an article, which is really nice. Um, and then here I can see that it's available and activated in the CDI. So when users search for something, an article or resource within this collection, they're going to be able to find it by a primo. I'm going to move on. So this is the institution zone. Um, next up is the network zone. And I've searched for a different item. I've searched for this item called the hidden face of rights. Um, because it's activated in the network zone, I know that the WRLC is providing me this resource. I can see the title of the collection this falls into, JSTOR DDA WRLC. Um, and then down here, I can see in bold, I can see all of the institutions that have this collection available. So it, eyeballing it, it looks like all of them to me. I'm not an expert in this. I'm an expert in looking for this GWA Health, which is my institution. So I know that this particular item is available to my users. Um, and I think, I'm sure the WRLC people are great at eyeballing that and knowing that all of the right institutions are there, but more often you're probably gonna just look for your institution. Um, gonna move on to the community zone now. So the community zone is what is available out there in the world. And in this case, I've searched for a different item. I've searched for this book, um, terrific book, The Ghost Map, the story of London's most terrifying epidemic um, about cholera in London. And here in the CZ, I can see that it's available from two providers as an ebook. I can see it's available for licensing or subscription via EBSCO host ebooks and ebook central. Um, I can also see because it has this little house next to it, this is an indicator that this title is actually um, available in some manner that this bib record likely is, is activated in my in institution zone. In this case, I actually, Himmelfarb, my library does not have this activated as an ebook in our institution zone, but we do have the print book. Um, but you could, this is an indicator that this is available in some way already at my library. Um, I can flip back if I think it could, I may have already purchased it via EBSCOhost or eBook Central Perpetual. I could flip back to the institution zone. I've done that and it's not there, so I know we don't have the eBook. Um, but it does give you an indicator. I'm going to pause just briefly for questions. If there are any questions, please feel free to chat them. Hey, Laura, this is Smita. Hey, Smita. Can I just like uh, make a clarification? When sure. you have that uh, uh, house icon, that means you have the collection EBSCO host ebook activated in your IZ, not the okay. ebook. So thank you very it's, much, Smita. It's telling you it is a collection is activated in your IZ. Thank you very much. I misinterpreted that. Um, so Smita was saying this book indicates that the collection is activated rather than the particular item. Any other questions, comments? I welcome the clarifications when I get things a little bit wrong. Okay. Um, 
let's move on to talk about collections and portfolios. Um, collections and portfolios, this is kind of a key concept in ALMA. Um, and I remember when we started with ALMA, it seemed like the new vocabulary seemed a little bit overwhelming. And now I can't remember how this wasn't always the way it was. Um, a collection in ALMA is a set of items. So for example, I mentioned CINAHL Complete. This is an aggregated collection. So there are different types of collections. Um, CINAHL is an aggregated collection. It's mostly e-journals. Um, I've activated it completely from the CZ. So the community zone record for CINAHL Complete has 1,364 titles activated. And my IZ also has 1,364 titles activated. Um, one reason for that is I have activated the setting when I activated the database or when I activated the collection and I'll complete, I chose to activate this setting, activate new portfolios associated with the service automatically. So when EBSCOhost maintains this collection in the CZ, those changes flow automatically to my IZ. Now, it does happen. It doesn't always happen on an instantaneous basis on any particular day that you look in, you may see those numbers slightly out of line, although the situation has greatly improved. So those changes do seem to flow from the CZ to the IZ more quickly. But I've sort of, I have made the decision to set up CINAHL Complete as a collection that's, um, it's completely activated in my IZ, but the specific portfolios in that are maintained by a data fed from the community zone. Um, another type of collection is Elsevier, and I'm giving the example Elsevier Science Direct journals. And this is labeled in um, ALMA as a selective collection. And selective, as you might imagine, means that you choose the items with the portfolios within that collection to activate. Um, for example, the CZ, in the CZ, the Elsevier Science Direct Collection has 4,877 portfolios available, but in my IZ, I only have 467 of those portfolios activated. So those are the titles that we maintain subscriptions for. The definition between um, the aggregated collection, the selective collection, it, I think it um, makes sense. CINAHL Complete is something you license as an entity, and so you get access to that aggregation of portfolios. Um, and in our case, we've chosen to activate all of them. Elsevier Science Direct journals, I, I don't know that there's any institution that is able to support the complete collection, all 4,877 of them. So that is a selective collection. Now that said, um, those labels are, are sort of meaningful when you're thinking about licensing the resources, but functionally within ALMA, you can treat them either way. I could choose if I wanted, even though Elsevier Science Direct is a selective collection, I could choose to activate the entire thing, all 4,877, and have the changes to that collection, this portfolio change to that collection fed automatically from the CZ. I don't do that because I don't have all of those titles. And similarly with CINAHL Complete, it's an aggregated collection. We have activated all the portfolios in that collection, but we could make another decision. Um, we could say, you know, we don't really wanna feed some of those titles we don't like. So we could choose to treat it like a selective collection. And that's one of the things Linda is gonna show you how to do is how to activate titles within the collection. So you can choose everything and she's gonna show you different method, methods of activating selected ones. But I just wanna point out these labels give you an idea of sort of how the collection was put together, but you can choose how to use them at your library. Um, the third type of collection is a database. Um, in this case, I've chosen LexiComp as my example. LexiComp is a searchable database. Um, and so in this case, a database doesn't have any constituent portfolios under it. It's just one item that's a collection in and of itself. Um, the portfolios are, of course, the specific items within the collection or they're standalone. So we can have a portfolio that belongs to one of our example collections, CINAHL Complete or Science Direct, or we can have a portfolio 
that exists completely independent of a collection. So in this case, I've given an example. We have a license to the streaming video, Power to Heal, um, and, and we have it as a standalone portfolio. Um, so again, a portfolio can be, um, it's most commonly in our collections a book or a journal, um, an electronic book or an electronic journal, but it can also be any other type of material. And so you, you get to label these as you wish, but I mean, from a pick list, streaming video, data set report, or other common types of portfolios. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm gonna take you through some examples of how this looks in Alma. Um, so to start, I was gonna show you an example, I wanna show you an example portfolio. This is the Power to Heal, the streaming video portfolio. So you can see um, it has nice cataloging data. I think I owe this credit for this to our cataloger, Sarah Hoover, who cataloged it very nicely. Um, you can see the full text link here in the center of the screen. Um, and then we have a note, we have a streaming video license for this. So we've added a note Ray, regarding the parameters of that license, the dates that um, license is available for. I'm gonna show you how this looks in Alma now. Um, so in Alma, again, this is an item in our, in our institution zone. So it is available there. I can see it has the full text. This is online get full text. So this is a full, it has the full text um, avail, service available for it. There's some order information here I can access if I wanted it. I'm not talking about that right now. And then there's a streaming video as well. It tells me the type of material. I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper into this portfolio. So here's the information on the portfolio. You can see it's again, a tabbed environment here at the top. Um, a lot of the same information. This portfolio is currently available to my users. It's a streaming video. I activated it, um, oh, just a year ago. That's nice. Um, and I'm gonna move on over to linking. Oops. Linking, um, on linking, you can see we're providing access via a static URL. Here's the direct access URL to this specific item. Um, and the proxy, we have it set to enable our proxy so that this will automatically be added. Once I set this up, I can actually use the button here to test the access to make sure I've done everything right. I've, you know, the proxy, the easy proxy registration is working. It's going through a proxy correctly, that the URL gets me to the right item. So this is a nice, useful placement of this button. Uh, the coverage screen, in this case, I don't really have anything on the coverage screen. The coverage screen is much more useful for journals, but this is where um, if you've activated something from the CZ, you might see the data information already listed here. And you can see there's the opportunity to do not only fixed dates, but rolling embargo dates. Um, and if you, I do sometimes or have sometimes come over here if I've activated something from a collection in the CZ and then found that the dates are a little different and I'm getting user complaints, I might come here and edit the dates to reflect what is currently available for that portfolio. Um, my acquisition information, in this case, it's listing the PO line that I have this linked to for billing. Uh, the notes information, uh, I don't make extensive use of the notes, but in this case, it was very useful to note um, both publicly the dates of the streaming video license and have an, in, an, it, in an, an internal description so that we were aware of what was going on there. And we added some information about who requested this streaming video so that at the, toward the end of the license, we can go back to that faculty member and see, is this something that's still in use? Should we try to renew this license? Um, I now wanted to talk, show you sort of to start the record for a collection. So this is the record that I activated, the cataloging record and the record that I activated from the CZ for CINAHL Complete. And I, I did want to display it because one, one of the issues, and I, I mentioned this earlier with 
activating things from the CINAHL, from the CZ, from the community zone, is that the quality of the catalog records can vary. And in this case, um, while the portfolio records for CINAHL complete, the ones that I've checked look really terrific, and I'll show you one of those later, the collection level um, cataloging information is not great for my library. Um, it has the title, the description is only in French, um, and it, it has very limited other information other than a French description. So it's not terrific, and I'm gonna show you how we've, in a few minutes, how, how we've also worked around this issue. Um, but I'm gonna dive in to CINAHL Complete in the community zone. Um, again, you can, you can see here, this link, if, when I was um, playing with this, this link will show me the record in the, net, in the community zone. So if I wanna switch back and forth between this and the community zone, I can use that. Um, the menu over here, you can see there's a host of things I can do. I can manipulate how it is in the CDI. I can look at the descriptive record or the cataloging record for it, delete it, view it, order it. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna really look at this record so you have an idea of sort of what you can do from within this collection level record. Um, so here in the collection level record, you can see the public name for this that came over from the CZ, the community zone was EBSCO hosts and all complete, but that's not how my library sort of promotes it to users. We just call it sin all complete. So I've given it, I've given it the public name override. I just typed this in myself and provided that information. Um, the description here was the one that came over from the um, community zone. And I also updated that here. Although um, I'm, not, I'm not sure that that's entirely necessary. Um, moving on to the general tab, I get you reminded this is an aggregator package provided by EBSCOhost. Um, I can look at more information on the interface, which I've not had to do. And I get an idea of when I activated this. And I just, I actually was playing with the activation. We've had this database for a long time, but I was playing with the activation in preparing for this session. So you see a pretty recent activation date. Um, on the additional tab, this I found interesting when we um, moved to Alma a few years ago. Here on the additional tab, there's this place where there's a level URL and you can see there's one that came over from the community zone and I've inserted an override, which is the link to CINAHL complete in my collection. Um, one thing I found interesting, if you put something in this level URL override, that means this record is going to display to the users. So if I didn't want the, if I didn't want the CINAHL complete record to display to the users, I could take this out and it should not display, although it might display because there's still a level URL here, um, in which case you can suppress it at the bib level. But anytime you have a level URL in here, it means it's going to display this a record for this resource to your users. I'm going to keep going. Um, in the next, I'm sorry, this is also in the additional tab. The additional tab here is long, so I'm scrolling down here. Um, and down here at the bottom, you'll see information on the portfolios. So you'll see it's a full text portfolio full text um, service. Um, so that's what it's doing to provide to my users. There's 1,364 portfolios and I have 1,364 activated. And so I realize this is getting a little nested. We're still viewing the portfolio, but now we're going to go ahead and move from, I'm sorry, we're viewing the collection and we're gonna go from viewing the collection to viewing that service. So this service is the full text. So I would just click here on the three dots and choose view the service. So I just wanna make that point. We're sort of nesting in. Um, here again, we're on the electronic service editor um, and you can see the service activation, it's available. Um, you can review, I did select to have the new portfolios added to this collection automatically. Um, I'm going to move over to the service description. It tells me it's a full text service. 
um, the linking information. So this is how it's taking all of those individual 1,364 individual portfolios in the CINAHL Complete Collection and creating URLs for them. Um, I've boxed some of the information around here. This, this collection uses parser parameters. And what that means is this coding is going to act in combination with an identifier for the specific journal and create a URL that gets my user to the target. I'm going to show you um, some places where you can override this um, to get to specific portfolios. But this general linking information here that I've boxed off, I have never edited this. I would be very reluctant to edit this um, just because it's a very complex set of data and it's maintained by the vendor. If I had issues with this, I would reach out to Alma um, and I would welcome if other e-resources folks are on the call now and have other approaches to this, I'd welcome them talking about it. But I, there are ways to fix links in Alma, but this particular information, I would encourage you to be cautious about adjusting. Um, down here, we have a little bit more information. Again, the article linking level is article. It's not a free service. Um, it's not Crossref supported. So I'm going to keep going. Um, the next tab over, or oops. yeah, I'm in the service editor. The linking tab. Oops. Um, this next tab piece of information I've scrolled down, and there's information I can input about my specific access to this database. So you can see we use a customer ID, and I've kind of obliterated it. I don't know that it's private information, but I thought. Maybe, maybe I don't want to share it. I don't know. So I did kind of block it out, but we've added some information here that customizes it for how our institution links to these resources. Um, and then the portfolios list. This is available in a couple different places, um, but here's one of them, the portfolio list. And from here, I can actually go in and see, I'm still in the service editor. You can see up here in the upper right-hand corner, but I can go in and move into one of the specific portfolios. So now I'm in a specific portfolio. This one is for AACN Advanced Critical Care. And so here again, you see the service level parameters that we saw on the prior screen that I encouraged you not to change. <laughs> But here you can see if I was having a linking issue with this specific journal, maybe all the other portfolios are working great, but I'm getting error reports on this one. This is where I would come in here and this piece, this parser parameter here, J key equals 26ZY. This is something I might consider adjusting. If everything else is working and this, all other portfolios are working fine and this portfolio isn't working, it may mean that this parser parameter for this particular journal is wrong. So I would go into the CINAHL complete database and I frequently, you can use the durable link or permalink creator and it will show you how EBSCO links to it. And you can pick out that piece of data that refers to the specific title. Um, in this case, this is absolutely right. If you go into AACN, advanced critical care in CINAHL, you will see that it, the durable link uses this same code. And so I can sort of check if I wanted to. Um, I would never normally check, but if, it, it, if a title isn't working, that's the first thing I would check to make sure that Alma has the right parser parameter listed here. Um, there are different ways. You can see here parser parameters that really we're linking to this. Another option here, if you you know, it's just not working, you don't have time to figure it out, you can switch the link for this particular portfolio to a static URL and just copy and paste that permalink or durable link from the database over here um, and choose to do it that way. I prefer to keep them all as parser parameters if that's the way the database is set up, but it's certainly if you just need a quick fix and to get it working while you sort out what's going on, that's another option. Um, here you'll see proxy selected, and I think I didn't mention this. I'm going to flip back to the service editor. Um, let's 
So here, I'm sorry, this is on the service editor at the bottom of this linking screen. There is proxy enabled, yes. And that is the place we typically activate the proxy. Um, if you activate the proxy at the collection level, it's only going to activate the proxy for that collection level link. So if I activate the proxy at the collection level for sin all complete, it's gonna proxy my link to sin all complete, but not to those constituent portfolios. Um, by activating the proxy at the full text service level, it carries down into all of the constituent portfolios. So everything, all of the portfolios that are within this full text service are gonna have the proxy information activated for them. Any questions there? I wanna take a pause for questions. Okay, I'm keeping my eye on the chat box if anything comes up. Okay, so in the service, we talked about um, adjusting the parser parameters as needed. And so that's why I wanted to point out here, there is an opportunity within each portfolio to activate the proxy, but I don't need to. I've already activated at the full text service port level, so I don't need to activate it for the individual portfolio. Okay, um, and then finally, in, so we've moved, we were in the portfolio editor, I've moved back out and we're back out in the collection level for CINAHL complete. And the last tab here is the CDI. Um, in this case, and this is the most likely thing you're gonna do for most of your resources, it's just activated. I, it's activated in the CDI so that the resources in this collection and the articles that appear in the resources in this or the portfolios in this collection, they're all gonna be available to my users on Primo. They'll be findable and linkable. Um, there are some other choices that sometimes get made for collections, um, depending on how you have them set up at your library. But this is the most, most common thing is it's just gonna, the CDI is just going to be activated. So, I, I did get a question explaining what the CDI actually is. The CDI, and um, I'm going to invite Linda to jump in here if she if she would like to. But the CDI is sort of the underlying metadata about the collection and about the items in the collection. So it's sort of what um, what we used to think of. I'm trying to think. It's sort of what generates cre creates the one search environment. So I have. AACN, that particular nursing journal activated. And so it's what gathers up all the metadata about all the articles in that journal um, and all the metadata about the articles available in sent all complete. How am I doing, Linda? Great. I will uh, explain uh, further during my presentation. Okay. Hopefully it will make more sense. <laughs> In general, it's what makes these resources and the articles findable when you're in Primo. And Linda will explain in more detail. And Cody has provided a nice link on um, the chat. All right. Um, so I do have one more screenshot to show you. This is um, a portfolio level record for this particular journal. Um, I did show you how the, the bib record or the cataloging record for CINAHL complete itself was sort of poor. But I did wanna contrast that with, this is the bib record that I got from the CZ for this particular journal. Um, and it looks very nice. And I, I, I think is a very appropriate level of cataloging, very useful to our users at any rate. Um, so I, I, I did wanna give you, because I gave you a little taste of the bad, um, a taste of what what else you could find. And I checked a number of this and all complete records and they all looked very similar to this in terms of level of cataloging. Okay, so just some final words about searching the, um, the community zone. Um, in general, searching in Alma can be a little persnickety. If you get, if you misspell a word, Alma is not terribly forgiving. If you miss a word in a title, Alma may not also be terribly forgiving. Um, so you do have to be careful and sometimes creative about how you search. 
in the CZ, my preference is to search by ISBN or ISSN, and I've had very good results with that. Um, but it is possible to also use some of the other tools in the CZ to focus your search. I wanted to give you some examples of how that could work. Um, so here's a search I did in the community zone for AACN. Um, and you can see I got 226 titles. If I look over here at the uh, facets available here on the left side of the screen, I can get an idea of sort of how, how I might sift down to what I'm interested in. Um, you can see there's aggregator packages and selective packages. So aggregator packages are going to be more likely sort of collections of things that you might buy at once, like CINAHL Complete. And the um, selective packages are going to be things that you might be able to license more individually. Um, although, again, those are, those are rough parameters. Um, the interface here, this sometimes gives you a clue as to the, or I've used this as a clue as to the vendor. So I see eBook Central here has um, 33 options for this. And so that's, that's a nice clue for me. We have an eBook Central license. Um, so that's, you know, makes me interested in learning more about which of the portfolios are available behind that door, if the, the one I'm looking for is. Down here, you can see there's book pack, book journal and mixed packages. So again, I've entered this kind of crummy search, just AACN, but it gives you an idea. If I was looking for a book or journal specifically, I can use this to sort out. And there's also the electronic material types down here. I have no explanation why there's two links for book here, but um, it does let you sift out so you can hopefully get it what you're interested in more quickly. Um, the second search here, I entered a more complete title, AACN Advanced Critical Care. You can see now I'm just getting journals, which is what I'm after. And then you can see here, I, I'm getting a little bit more useful information maybe about the interfaces. So I can see, whoops. I'm sorry, I didn't advance that. So here I can see, I'm just getting the journals, but I can see there's different, um, the CCC, Get It Now, EBSCO host, and look for things, for my library it works to look for things that we're already licensing with, but also you can explore what your options are. Um, one nice option here is I've narrowed this down to this particular portfolio available in the miscellaneous e-journals collection. And there's a button here with linking information. So if I wanted to see, see sort of how to get to this item, this is useful because now I have a link over to that journal. Um, it may not be useful, like if I pull this, the linking information up for CINAHL complete, because it's going to show me all that parser parameter and the parser stuff, which I cannot eyeball to get a usable link out of. But in this case, for things that are providing you a more direct um, a URL or a static link, it can be very nice. All right. Um, and lastly, in the CZ, I've clicked on this, the, um, the icon up here, the uh, magnifying glass with the plus on it. Alma, well, I um, typically do stick with the basic searches and then I'm periodically reminded of how powerful this search interface is for finding things or finding things that don't include specific pieces. So if you're not finding what you want, don't forget about the advanced search features, which can be very, very powerful. All right, I am ready to turn things over to Linda. Are there any questions I can try to answer before I do that? All right. Thanks very much. Okay, can I share my screen? Let you should me be able to just click, click that at the green at the bottom. Okay. Okay. Let me uh, open up my 
Okay, how I'm doing? Okay, we see uh, a search screen. Okay, try to get familiar. Okay, so this this is uh, the last uh, slide of Laura's. Okay, you see the topics? Yes. Okay, I'll try uh, to explain the rest. Um, so as I uh, mentioned, earlier that I will talk about the e-resources activation and deletion first, and before I do the CDI, uh, which is very complicated. Mm. Okay, first know how to activate the e-resources. There are mm, basically three types of e-collections in, uh, in OMA, in the system, um, in two types categories, databases, and packages. Um, packages, there are two types, selective and aggregator. Uh, they don't have function difference in Norma, as far as I know. I don't, uh, maybe I, I'm not familiar with uh, uh, acquisition. Maybe they are uh, mm, significance there for the, for these two types of uh, two types of packages, I see in the chat some people see only half of the screen. Um, is that the case? Oh, okay, fixed. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, take a look at this. Um, a slide that um, the difference between uh, databases and the packages are the services. Basically, uh, for packages, we call them uh, collections. Um, they have for services need to need to activate it, uh, which can be full text services or selected full text services. And the databases, norm you can add services, but normally they don't. I will talk about database activation first. It's because it's a little bit different. Um, for databases activation, um, I, I have a, a screen here, just uh, three steps, quite straightforward. Um, I'll talk about the activation from CZ first, you start from CZ, you look for an, or you find a, uh, a package from the CZ and that's the first step. And then you follow the prompt or wizard after you click on activate and finish the wizard. And that's all, it's quite simple, one, two, three. And the benefit of, uh, Activating from CZ is uh, you already have a uh, bib level record and uh, also a level URL. And for databases, the reason I talk about uh, activating databases first because um, it's a little different than uh, packages activation. It has uh, uh, for databases, so there are two required um, fields that you need to uh, take care of before the database actually is activated. Um, first is uh, you need to have a level URL and second, they should be an unsuppressed bib record. And if you start from the CZ, the, both of these already in place. And the rest of the fields um, are optional according to the situation in your library. Uh, you can specify the library. And uh, for us, we are just one library. So it's not 
uh, required the default to the institution. And uh, for counter platform, we don't need to, uh, it's not required and you need to load from the uh, providers. Um, interface name, um, a note about that is uh, for the interface name to be populated, the interface need uh, to be edited in the vendor records. And then uh, we have for um, PO line, a word about that is uh, um, it depends on the workflow in the library. You can just uh, activate the database, as I said, uh, following the three steps and then add your PO afterwards. Or you can just find the uh, database in CZ and click on the action uh, menu and then order. And that's the first, as the first step. So the different um, steps according, different steps or according to your workflow. Um, if it is a subscription or not free database, you need to provide a proxy. And uh, um, lastly, some of the databases has uh, the CDI, CDI tab that a lot of things you need to consider. And uh, as I said, not all of them have that. Uh, well, we will talk about the CDI last. Okay, um, a little bit different from activating a database starting uh, at IZ. So you don't find a database, a appropriate database uh, in the CZ, and then you wanted to start from the scratch. So you go to the also three, just one, two, three, three test steps. And uh, um, you, go, you go to the menu on the left of the OMA uh, left, tab resources and add e, uh, start the e resource e collection editor um, put in the public name and save and follow the wizard and finish the wizard also uh, as i mentioned before two required um, fields for the database to be activated uh, one is a bib record the other is a level url if you start from IZ, these two you need to take care of before you activate the databases. Um, is normally the uh, metadata librarian will have the baby record in place first, and then uh, the acquisition will provide the level URL. Um, I found this function you know, once you have the databases um, activated and uh, you can always go back to edit the collection, say you forgot to unpress or you want to do uh, other editings. And I found this function very handy. Um, you go to the three dot action row and uh, create E activation task. You can always do that for uh, databases or collections or packages. Um, I found it's uh, the most um, wonderful thing about this is, uh, you know, sometimes I create a database and I forgot to um, suppress the bib record and then I saved it and realized it's a, it's a suppressed bib record the database is not activated and I cannot uh, see the record in, uh, in Primo and then I have to open up, normally I have to open up a metadata editor and then go there to unsuppress. Um, I found using this uh, e-activation task, I don't have to go there. I can just um, click create e-activation task and go up to the top uh, and find the, find the task. And I can do a bunch of things there. I can do unsuppress in the edit resources, edit other fields of the database. 
this uh, e-activation task function um, applies to packages also. So I want to recommend using that. Activation packages um, is um, pretty much the same. It's just uh, not with those two required fields. The bit record, records doesn't have to be un, uh, suppressed for the, for the whole package. And there is an, mm, the level URL is not required. How packages are activated are by the services. Um, activating from uh, IZ is uh, pretty much the same. Uh, is you just need to have the um, bib record in place. And so I will just talk about activate from uh, CZ. Um, the difference between the packages and the, um, and the database is so the, there is a service full text or selective full text service involved. Um, you, when you follow the activation wizard, there would be a tab says uh, full text services. And uh, there you click on the activate this service and make service available. Click these two buttons and then in follow the wizard. And follow the wizard. Um, along the way, you will be asked to specify the proxy. And then you have uh, different ways of uh, activating, adding portfolios. We will talk about adding portfolios in a little bit. Okay, let me go back here. Uh, activating, there are two options, two, two ways to activating portfolios. You can activate all from the uh, CZ, that's mostly for aggregators. And uh, you can also activate via an Excel file. We'll talk about it in a little bit. And then the manual activation, I do that a lot because um, as a law library, um, we don't want uh, non-legal materials in our system. So we do uh, a lot of manual activation also. Um, okay, so if I choose the second option, Excel file, that's uh, also called the batch processing. So what do you need to do is uh, you choose, you, you selected the second option using Excel, uh, Excel file to activate a batch of uh, uh, portfolios. You follow the prompt and then you need first download an Excel loader from a knowledge base. I have a link here, you download that and then you somehow get a list of uh, the identifiers and you just open up the Excel loader, have um, copy and paste the list of identifiers you have, and then come back to OMA and follow the prompt. Um, the one thing I want to get everybody's attention is uh, for adding portfolios, update poly portfolios, the not um, many difference between the loading policy type, the delete portfolios is the function that we need to pay special attention to um, because delete portfolios in this instance is not necessarily deleting. Uh, I have an example here uh, see, I follow the wizard and I upload, select the file and I'll upload the file here. If I choose complete and the delete, what that means, that means what's not in the file will be deleted. If I choose the incremental and the delete, that means delete what's in my file. So the result will be different. 
And I encourage everybody to just follow the wizard and uh, choose validate online and uh, go next. It won't do anything, but it will give you a report. There, if you have errors or if uh, you chose the wrong policy type, loading policy type, you will realize that. So, okay, see for different um, type I chose, when I chose the first one, complete delete. Um, in my file, there were total 252 records in the file. Um, and the number of uh, portfolios to be deleted if I chose, if I choose complete, um, it will delete those not in the file. And uh, if I chose incremental delete, those in my file would be deleted. And in both instances, even though um, I'm trying to delete in records, 17 portfolios will be activated. Those 17 portfolios are those in my file and in the CZ. So that's, it's a little bit complicated there. So uh, the key to remember is when I chose complete, delete is, it means deleting those not in the file. And for incremental delete, delete those in the file. So that's batch, um, batch processing of the portfolios. And the next I want to talk about the global processing using a job just a little bit because for the next advanced uh, uh, electronic resource training, uh, we will talk about that in details. And uh, what do you do here is you just go to run a job function. You, I think you need uh, some certain authorities and then you search the portfolio and you have these um, different uh, jobs available there. Um, an example, an example task I'm doing now is uh, my library is uh, migrating from one proxy server to another. So a lot of our portfolios URL having old, you know, those static you are having older um, proxy string. And then I can come here, I create a set, come here, and uh, change electronic portfolio information here. Um, sometimes when we consider purchasing a new um, purchasing a new package or database, we want to know what's in the database um, that it, the database maybe or the uh, collections may contain uh, titles we already have. So we want to, uh, we want to compare, we want to do a overlap analysis. So there is a um, function in OMA. It's uh, you follow the steps on top of my screen, resources, advanced tools, and then overlap and the collection ana analysis. There are two, two types of uh, analysis, one is compare one uh, database to another database, one collection to another collection. So uh, say, as I said, when you are considering um, activating or considering purchasing a new database, you want to know what's in there um, compared to another database. And you can do that here. Um, or you, when you have a list of identifiers, say you have a list of uh, um, ISSN of one collection of, of everything in one collection, and you want to know if we already have uh, everything in that list, and you can do the overlap analysis there also. Uh, 
um, a, another function I would like to recommend to everybody is uh, uh, when we do uh, editing of a, anything, a electronic resources, electronic resources, um, there is a pull down a function list and uh, there is a one function called report to Exlibris. And you do need uh, to configure a little bit. And uh, what it does is if you come across a problem um, e-resource, a problem e-resource include database, uh, collections, portfolios, anything, come across a problem one, you click on the, um, the three dots row action and report to Exlibris and you will, all the information is pre-populated and then uh, Salesforce tickets automatically created and you will get an email. So I highly recommend that. Okay, so far questions. Okay. Um, we, we had a question about OCLC. Did we answer that? I have for the full screen, so let me. The question was, can the, can the bib records be imported from a bibliographic utility like OCLC? Yes, yes, that's uh, in the uh, metadata editor. Okay, let me open up the chat. Can a baby record be imported from a baby utility? Uh, yeah, sure. That's in the metadata editor. I think your metadata editor, uh, um, metadata libra librarian or system librarian needed to uh, do some configuration. So uh, before I go uh, to CDI, uh, just to summarize, to activate the databases, we need to have uh, two fields um, required, two fields for it to be actually activated. One is the unsuppressed bib record. The other one is the level URL, which is not case for um, collections, packages or collections. Um, mm, packages are activated uh, by way of activating services where you uh, add portfolios and you activate, uh, you provide the proxy, you know, so that the, the full text will be available in Primo. Okay, so now um, we'll talk about the CDI. Um, this is, uh, as I mentioned, is the most ridiculous thing in OMA, and it's very helpful, though. Um, we got a one question um, earlier, what the CDI was. <laughs> it's a good question. Um, okay, it stands for Central Discovery Index. It's a unified index or a combined index of all the data uh, available to Exlibris and all the data that the providers provided to Exlibris that they wanted to share with everybody. Um, there were two mm, types of data that they share with everybody. One is uh, those uh, available ones and the other type is the searchable ones, searchable ones. It's just they want you to search, but they may not provide you the uh, full text um, link or, yeah, full text link. Um, so in CDI, uh, there were two, um, included two groups of data. It's the Exlibris provided data and the your institutional local data. Um, what it does is, well, we have an impression from Primo CDI search that uh, it will, in addition to the 
title level, you have access to book chapters, uh, journal articles, and maybe um, proceedings, you know, those content within an item level. Um, so what is the, how, how the ex libris or how the CDI provides provides those information in related to those titles in your OMA is by matching the on standard identifiers, ISBN, ISSN, LCCN number. Um, if your data do not have those, then the quality of a CDI search will be affected. Um, CDI does match on titles, but that will be a fuzzy title, fuzzy match, and that would affect the quality and the link quality at the primo. Let's see if I have a, okay, good. I did uh, include a link so that, a, a screenshot so that you will understand what CDI is better. Okay, CDI is um, a, at the Primo is uh, a um, search scope. When you type in anything in the search box, you will have this list of scopes popping up in the article. In my library is called article uh, scope. That is the CDI scope. And uh, say I searched for lawyers well-being and then the URL on top of the screen URL, it's like that, I copy it down. And then you see the search scope equals central index. So that's uh, what we call is a CDI search. If I search within the article CDI scope, the um, were two, uh, there were two type of uh, result will be populated. Um, the default is uh, called filtered search result. And uh, on the right hand side, I have this circle called expand my result. That is called expanded search result. So only in CDI scope, search, you will see the refine my result by expand or by filter my result. Only in this scope, search and scope, you will see that function. And what that means is that by default, at least in my library, I think by most library is the, by default is the filtered search. Filtered search, you will have the things available available online. You will have the full text available. And then expand my search, you will have uh, in addition to the uh, available search result, you have only searchable result, searchable. So what depend, what, what, de what you got depends on how you set up in OMA, the CDI settings. And uh, uh, because of this uh, unified index, so the uh, CDI can provide a lot more than item, item level uh, search result. Say you have a book reviews connected to the um, to the book or journal level uh, search result. So is that helpful to, I hope that's helpful to understand what, a, what CDI is. You know, I will repeat CDI is the article search scope and only in this search scope, you will have this expand my result option there. And in the URL, it will tell you that search scope equals central index. And what you got from a CDI search is uh, in addition to your OMA, um, OMA activated full text, you will have a searchable result. 
And uh, in addition to article, I mean, the title level result, you have articles, journal articles, book chapters, all populated, and then they are matched and merged. The, you know, you don't have a, say you search for a title, you don't have a hundred of those search results. They are matched and merged. Okay, so uh, earlier we talked about um, activating um, search, uh, activating um, databases. And there is another data, another activation. When you search for something in collection, uh, search for something, yeah, like a collection or database in, in a community zone, Sometimes you will see a result like this on my screen. You know, the first one under CDI, available, available for CDI search activation. There is, there is no such thing for Boston University School of Law. And uh, the second and third, you will see, um, you will see that CDI ser search activation option there and that means these two this second and the and the third collections they are um, at least 80 percent of uh, data um, available in cdi indexed in cdi so that's um you can choose to activate them so all the data all the titles within those collections will have for article or journal article, book chapter level information activated. Okay. So um, when you have for these available for CDI search activation available there and the, the search right is free if you see the second option there, search right is free. And uh, you can click on activate for search in CDI there. You can activate that without actually activating the database. So there were two type of uh, activation. You activate the database as we talked earlier that means the database or the portfolio is uh, traditional activation. You can also either way or by combination um, activate for search in CDI. And when you activate them, the, all the information, all the records will be searchable will become searchable in the expanded search at the primo, whether they appear as a full text or not, it depends. There are a lot of pieces, it depends. So, um, okay, let me go to the next, okay. Once you click on click uh, click on activate the CDI. Okay, let's go back. You click on activate for search in CDI. Um, you will have this screen or any database or collection that has a CDI activation available. You will see this tab, CDI tab. And on top of the tab, the first half of the tab are the CDI institution settings. And how do you choose between all the you know, options? How do you choose? It's all depend what you have at the bottom of the screen. At the bottom of the, of the screen, you have uh, 
information like uh, search right, full text right, full text linking, and the CDI type. All of these are fields have different meanings and depend depending what you got at the bottom of the of this screen depending what you got you select what's on top so this is a quite complicated i'll explain a little bit um okay at the Bottom, uh, this is the screen of the bottom of the um, CDI tab. And I will further focus on the fields I selected. First, there is a search right in CDI. There are free or subscription, two types of search right. Mostly search right are free because the providers want you to have the search right, want the patients to have the search right. And sometimes subscription, you don't even have the search right in CDI. That means you activate it, you still don't see anything at the primo because you have not subscribed. And the subscribe means you purchased it and activated the, uh, database or collection, because that's the search right. And then full text right in CDI, there are also two types. One is open access. Open access, so most, of course, open access um, collections, they all have a search right for free. And for those kind of collections, you can feel free to activate them all but you don't want to clutter your primo. So that's another story. Um, there are full text. There are another full text to write that is subscription. That is the most of the case for us. You know, that's what uh, our acquisition department does. Mm, we buy things and then we have a uh, mm, full text right to the collection. And lastly, um, important piece is the full text linking. That's the links, how, how the item, how the records at the Primo got the links. There were two type. One is the linking record, linking type. The other one is link resolver. Okay, what, that, what, uh, what this means, linking record, linking, are the links provided by the provider, provided in um, within CDI. And the link resolver are the links from your, from your OMA, are the open URL links. Does that make sense? Whenever you see link resolver linkings, think about OMA, you know, the OMA URLs everything you created, everything you activated in OMA, that's the resolver linking. And then there are CDI, uh, there are records, or the collections CDI provides that they come with the linking, uh, come with the link links, that's called the linking records. So all these have something, you know, to do with each other. And then all these together will depend how you choose the CDI settings and they will affect what kind of records and, and what records are available, what records are just searchable. So all depend on the CDI setting and how you choose those settings depends on these, these uh, criteria. So we, we, we had a question. Can you give an example of when you would activate CDI for a collection and when you maybe should not? Okay. Um, when you, wow, that's a very complicated. Okay. Um, 
I would say you always activate CDI whenever available because you want to take advantage of uh, CDI records. Um, you want to have book chapters, journal articles, you know, all the, all the specific content within your database, within your um, collections. I think you should always do that. Um, it's just, uh, I think the question should be how you activate. You don't want all the records clutter your uh, Primo search. And yeah, that's why I think these, uh, how the CDI setting, how you set up is very important. You know, because uh, the settings will decide what records appear in your filtered search and uh, what records appeared in the expanded search. I was gonna, Linda, if it's okay, I'll, I'll jump in and give an example from our library of a place where we don't activate CDI. Mm -hmm. um, and it's for some of the ebook collections that we activate. The, um, and again, we're a health sciences library and the ebook collections, for example, Access Medicine, the, if we have it activated in CDI, because we're a specialized library, we actually have our like local catalog or catalog the books. Um, and so we have a local catalog record. And if we also have it activated in CDI, we get a duplicate record. So we have records both from our local catalog and the CDI. In this case, the CDI record doesn't give us any deeper cataloging of the book chapters or internal content. Um, and our local records are generally better catalog records than we get that than the CDI, you know, better metadata than the CDI is providing. So in that case, we actually suppress the CDI records in favor of our local records, just because of the nature of both the collection, like the information provided from the CDI and our collection. Mm, thank you. And uh, I forgot to mention that CDI involves only um, CZ record, you know, local records is uh, another story. Okay, so uh, um, in summary, um, how you set up the CDI settings will have effect um, in your Primo CDI search result and uh, how you set up CDI settings depend on what you got here on this screen, you know, search right, full text right, and uh, full text linking, and especially these three fields, especially these three fields. Um, yeah, it's a little bit harder to explain. So um, I will try at the end of the of this presentation, I will give you a dictionary <laughs> or a chart, a matrix as to what to do. Okay, so um, the setting on the top, you know, sometimes we have different, uh, a little bit different. See on the top, I uh, within the the red box. There were four four lines, right? CDI search activation. Uh, second is we subscribe to only some, and the third is a CDI only full text. And then the fourth is do not show as full text available. And uh, um, yeah, we will sometimes we have a different, a little bit of different options up there. Also that. Uh, uh, that is because you have a uh, different criteria at the bottom of the screen. Um, for example, this one, this one, um, we have well, first search right in CDI is free. So that's why on uh, the first line of the setting, uh, active, not active is uh, is, uh, act, is alive, you know, sometimes it's uh, faded out if it's not free, it's faded, you don't have option to choose and you have to subscribe and activate the collection or database 
in OMA first before you can do the CDI activation here. Um, okay, the second line is so we only subscribe to some titles. That line appears when the collection is a package rather than a database, you know, because database, you don't have specific portfolios. So that line would not appear. Um, the third is a CDI only full text. That line only appears when your linking type is link in records. Full text linking is a link in records. You know, it's, it doesn't depend on resolver. Link resolver is uh, everything OMA. As I mentioned that, think of uh, when you see link re resolver, think of OMA, everything you activate it. Portfolios, full text database, everything you activate, that's uh, link resolver. And the last you do not show as a full text in CDI, even if active in OMA, that is a, um, think that a suppression function. You suppress what you have in OMA, you want to suppress them uh, as a full text available. They will still appear in expanded search. The, lay, the flag would say no full text. Uh, why do we do that is another story, um, you know. Okay, one case for that is as Laura mentioned, uh, ebooks. Sometimes you have uh, uh, ebooks. If you do not click, do not show full text available, then you may end up with duplicate ebooks in your, uh, in your discovery. Okay, so I hope it makes a little bit sense here. Um, next example will be still in this red box, there will be a little bit different because of the criteria or the, yeah, the features of the database of the collection. Next, okay, see, we have three lines. We don't have a which line, let go back. We don't have a CDI only full text activation line because the full text linking here is a link resolver. So you don't have that option up there. Because the link resolver, everything OMA, it will appear in everywhere in filtered search. So you can't say, you can't say what is the word uh, CDI only. So that's why it's not there. Okay, the rest of them, I hope it makes sense. Okay, go next. Um, for this one, it comes back. CDI only full text activation is back because the linking is a link in record. The full text linking is link in record. And which, which one is not here is the uh, go back. We subscribe to only some titles is not there. So, why is that? Because this is not a collection, it's a database. There are no specific titles. So you, that, that line doesn't, um, doesn't uh, um, relate it here. So it, does that make sense? Okay, the lastly is uh, sometimes we have uh, neither. It's uh, we only have two lines, two lines in the setting, uh, because one, this is a link resolver linking collection. So we don't have the CDI only option up there. And um, we don't have, uh, we only subscribe to some titles because this is a database. It's not a collection. There were no specific um, portfolios. So for this, we only have two options up there. Okay, so some rule of thumb, I think, um, I think it still don't make any sense to you. <laughs> because you don't know what is what. And so, okay, I want to point out some of the rules. First, only CZ collections are searchable in CDI. You know, because only CZ 
theta is in CDI index that ex libris has. And the second is all active full text collection are automatically published to CDI. That regardless of you activate CDI or not, you heard me? Regardless you activate it, all your full text collection in OMA, you know, those portfolios you activated are automatically published to CDI. So, you know, say you activated a, day, a, a, a collection with 1000 title, 1000 journals, and then, you know, the journal articles will be available somehow, you know, um, journal articles will available because there is a big unified index behind. So, okay, I want to go back here. As I said, all full text you already activated will be available in CDI, no matter you do, you click on active or not active, regardless you're activating the CDI function in OMA or not, they are already there. Okay, the third is uh, we subscribe to only some titles in this collection. When do we see these? When the pack, when the collection is a package, you know, not database, when you have all the portfolios, when do you say yes? Um, when the linking is link resolver. As I said, when you see link resolver, what do you think? You think of uh, OMA, everything you activated in OMA, the portfolios, the full text artic, uh, database you activated. When you see the linking type, full text linking type is link resolver, you always click yes. Always click yes. We, even though the line doesn't make sense, we subscribe to only some titles. Well, you, I already know some of you would have question. What about aggregators? We subscribe to everything. You, as long as it is a link resolver database, you know, everything you activated in OMA, you click yes. It won't do anything because it won't do any harm because of the rule, some, some rule number one, you know, all the, uh, uh, I mean, number two, all those full text collections, full text resources are automatically published to CDI. So as long as you have it in OMA, it will be available in CDI. And why do we do that? Okay. I will take, I will give you an example for selective, for selective uh, packages, like uh, Laura just mentioned, you activate a 400 out of 1000. And what about the 600? You know, you don't have in your OMA, if you click no here, that means everything will become available in CDI. You don't want to do that because when the patron click on such title, it will say not available because you don't have it in your, in your OMA. So it's safe always to say yes here, you know, then only those in OMA will be, will say uh, available online at Primo. And uh, in uh, another type is a linking record that all the records come with the database or come with the uh, collection, you put no there because the links do not depend on what you have in OMA. 
and you want to take advantage of all the information. So you, you say, no, we subscribe to all titles in this collection. Okay, hope this makes sense. So I have these three, uh, three um, uh, rules. Okay, um, I, I know there are a lot of information. Uh, what is what and uh, what would affect uh, in the filtered search. Filtered search include all those available. It says online, available online. And then uh, what will appear in the expanded search, which is in addition to the available ones, there are uh, just searchable ones with no full text. It all depends on you know these combinations. So I have these. Um, it's like my dictionary. Um, I give the credit at the bottom of the screen. Um, it's from another uh, colleague. It's a little complicated there, so I simplified. Um, okay, so I will talk a little bit about this first. Column is the CDI linking type. If the collection is a linking record, and then we have packages and the database is two type of uh, collections in OMA, and depends what um, what the services and the activate status. And uh, for CDI settings, you have different options and what outcome in promo with primo primo will 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 be so this is a my little bit dictionary um i do want to say don't take what i said seriously because <laughs> a lot of things behind um there are a lot of details that do not a hundred and percent match what I say here at the column says outcome in primo. There it's a ongoing, it's an ongoing file. Um, okay, one thing, oops, I want to point out is for link in record, you see there are two types, uh, collection types, packages or databases. And for link resolver, at the bottom of the, the, the screen, link resolver, I only listed packages down there because for databases, link resolver, they only mostly affect um, abstract and the index databases, not full text databases. They are even more complicated and you will have to consult uh, knowledge base for details. So I only listed those you know, basic ones here. So it won't be too, too overwhelming. So, so even though it's already too, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, information here already. Okay, so uh, lastly, mm, a little bit, uh, you know, when you, when you activate a, uh, a database or a collection, a package, and you activate a CDI search, what, what do you do uh, to, to uh, check? Okay, it's quite simple to check what you, um, the effect at Primo is, um, you find the DBID, database ID of a certain, collection and then you go to the primo search and you do a remember the CDI scope search search for anything see for this example I search for qqqq just because you know it's easier to locate and then change the URL from a query any to care query dbid and then contains change from QQQQ to the DBID. And then I will 
do this search, I will get the records from this from this collection, you know, the CDI records from this collection, if the records are provided by the by this provider, because we are have alternative provider data also. So that's another thing to make CDI more complicated. So this is a little uh, tip to check what do you have in a certain database. You know, search by DBID in in uh, CDI scope. Another thing is, uh, you know, it looks techy, but uh, it's quite simple. You just go to the full display of a certain word in CDI, of a certain word in Primo CDI scope. You just uh, click F12, F5, and then you will have the screen pop up and you will find the, um, oops, you will find the, um, the open URL. And in the open URL, you will see the identifier, identifier of the record. And then you go back to OMA, search by that identifier, you will know, okay, well, which collection is that record from? So you know if anything goes wrong, you will check the collection there in OMA. Okay, so that's a little uh, tip and the trick. Uh, I go back one slide because on top I have the link to see the details. Okay, uh, another thing is, uh, when you click on uh, record in Primo, if you see view record in certain thing, it's a CDI record and the full display of a record, there is a source field. It will tell you from which uh, database this record is from. And okay, troubleshooting CDI. Sometimes we see, uh, not sometimes, always we see strange things and uh, you want to check and uh, check what's going on, what's wrong and uh, keep in mind that these certain things. You know, for CDI, we have a newspaper search. You know, whenever you search in CDI scope at the very bottom of the page of Primo, you see a newspaper search. Sometimes, a, a collection is only for newspaper search. So that's why you don't see anything in the expanded or anyway in that scope. And also whenever you edit a CDI setting of a certain collection, it takes at least 48 hours. Uh, I think Exlibris claims 38 hours. It, uh, for from my experience, it take like a week before the uh, before the things take effect, and then um, you know when full text right is subscription. If the full text right is uh, by subscription, mm, then you need to log in at Primo to see sometimes, and uh, a, sometimes you cr come across a title that uh, it says available and actually not. When you click on the link, you may need to check your coverage in Bago, whatever, in OMA records. And uh, as I said, the CDI and your OMA records are matched by identifiers. So it's always good to have a full, full BIB records in your system. Um, um, okay, uh, I think... That's about it for, for this, for, for CDI. Okay, I hope it makes sense. It, there are a lot of information. Remember my rule of thumb and uh, I hope the matrix make a little sense to you. I may talk for too long, I'm sorry.
Okay, and I think we can we can make um, the your PowerPoints available. We'll put them on Basecamp so that people can refer back to those, and uh, because there's a lot of great information in there. Um, I know we're running a little short on time, but if there are any last questions, uh, we can take one or two. Yes, um, our emails here. So if you have questions, I think uh, CDI really is uh, beyond um, beyond the basic training. <laughs> That's at least to me, it's very it's cool. never ending. <laughs> If you want me to demonstrate anything uh, at the Primo or in OMA, I can do that now. You know, if you, any of you want to stay. All right, well, again, um, I th thank you. There was a question posted at 325. Let's see if we can find that question. Is there a way to view the records, ebooks, chapters, and articles within a CDI collection without activating CDI and stumbling across the CDI records in Primo? Uh, let me find a is This there... is Matthew. That was my question. And I think it was actually answered by your, um, your Primo tip about um, searching in Primo with the URL by that DBID. Unless there are other ways as well to see the contents, but I, that, um, that effectively answered my question. So thank you. Mm, great. Um, you know, I, I uh, left a link in my uh, PowerPoint uh, for the tips and the tricks. There are, I think there are other ways to check. There are other ways to check. And uh, I, as I mentioned that my matrix <laughs> or my dictionary I provided there, um, they are not 100% accurate uh, to my understanding so far. There are a lot of things uh, automatically after activated by the CDI. You know, what I know is everything you have in OMA is automatically activated unless you suppress, you know, there is a suppress function uh, in the setting, unless you suppress everything you have is activated. And in addition to that, I know there are a lot of things you did not activate, you know, the CDI when you, when you find a collection, it seems you did not activate the, either the database or the uh, CDI searching, but you still find a lot of things there. So it's quite puzzling. Okay, well, thanks to our two presenters. Um, this was a, a, a great session with a lot of information. Uh, to anyone who is um, still here. If you are interested in the further uh, events in our four-part series, the same Zoom link will work, and it's on the next Fridays, the, the next three Fridays, um, and you're welcome to join. So thank you for, for participating, and uh, watch for the uh, documents to be uploaded to the Electronic Resources Base Camp. Thank you very much. Thank you.